What's up, everybody? I'm Thomas J. Beleza. Welcome to another Right Mindset. Uh, today, we are going over screenwriting, uh, basically, uh, you know, step 10 in screenwriting, uh, how to write your novel. This is uh, the table read and taking notes. In this lesson, we will explore the significance of this critical stage in the screenwriting process, which is the table read. Uh, and it's not just a casual gathering of actors and readers. It's a pivotal moment where you gain fresh perspectives and insight into your script. So let's do it. Let's get into it. Roll that intro. Let's get right into it. Section one, the purpose of a table read. If you don't know, you will know. Before uh, diving into the mechanics of it all, we need to understand the core purpose of a table read. Uh, don't you think? So. At its heart, a table read is about gaining a clear understanding of your script's potential. Not just to be like, yeah, I wrote that. And yeah, these people are reading it. And yeah. No. It's to help you identify strengths and weaknesses, uh, assess character dynamics, and gauge the overall flow of your story. Now, by doing this, you move beyond your subjective viewpoint and approach your script with a more critical eye. So this step is essential because it allows you to see what might not be immediately apparent unless, uh, you know, you get other people to read it. Because sometimes you got to hear it to really see it. And uh, that'll help you elevate your storytelling. So let's go over the uh, six elements, all right? One, gaining objectivity. One of the most significant advantages of a table read is gaining objectivity. All right, objectivity. All right, as a writer, you're uh, intimately familiar with your script, characters, and story. We have that bias of the knowledge, right? So, however, uh, we become blind to the flaws or inconsistencies to our work because we know the truth beyond the page. A table read brings fresh eyes and ears to your project, helping you see beyond your own bias and attachments. This newfound objectivity is uh, invaluable. Which brings us to uh, character exploration. So during a table read, this is important. Actors, actors, breathe life into your characters. This provides a unique opportunity to witness how your characters interact and evolve throughout the story. In fact, you might see things actors bring to the, the character that you didn't realize were there. And therefore, you could either lean into them or you could be like, you know what? I don't want to see that in the character, but you never know, right? So pay attention to the nuance deliveries of your actors as it can reveal insights into character dynamics you may not have considered this deeper understanding of your characters can lead to a more authentic and compelling storytelling you hear that also as always evaluating the dialogue number three dialogue is a cornerstone of screenwriting and a table read allows you to evaluate the effectiveness of your lines Listen to how your dialogue flows and whether it feels natural coming from the characters. Are there moments of tension, humor, or emotion that resonate with your audience, which would be the people around the table? Alternatively, are there instances where the dialogue feels forced or unrealistic? So I've had uh, many a table reads in my lifetime, and when the actors start crying or you hear them laugh or... They're reacting to it, or they start going like, oh, why would they do that to that character? Or oh, I can't believe, like, they get into it. You know that your your script is really resonating. If they're all just reading like, hey, Jim, how's it going? Uh, pretty good. How's everything been going? Oh, oh, awesome. I can't believe what happened down at the precinct. You know that the the, the script isn't resonating. But the other thing is uh, uh, dialogue, okay? If people are tripping up over the dialogue, that's an issue. Because coming from, I, I'm also an actor. I'm a director, right? Back in the day. Anyway, uh, I'm a thespian. Uh, when we learn our lines, the lines that are the easiest to learn are the ones that seem natural. And when I say seems natural, I mean, there is a difference between going, what we have here has always been, but never could, in the world that we know, has established a threat to humanity. Like, 
it's it's so unnatural because it, our brain isn't putting the words together. But what we have here is an unnatural threat coming to us. It's easier not only to memorize as an actor, but it flows better. Uh, so while they're reading it, if you hear the readers tripping up or happen to reread it again, there might be something going on with the way you have the words. Now, does that mean you can't have smart characters and you have like intellectual dialogue? Uh, no, no. But sometimes we put a lot of, we put weird wording. Of course, pacing and timing, we always talk about this. You know, the screenwriting uh, uh, is not just about what characters say. It's also about when they say it, how they say it, and the way it kind of is informed to the audience. So a table read helps you assess the pace and timing of your story. Are you allowing moments to drag uh, or rush through? You know, are you? do you want character moments to kind of breathe? Well, you want that to kind of last a little bit longer. Do you want uh, action to kind of just uh, take forever or you want to boom, 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 right? Uh, five, identifying weaknesses. Every script has its weaknesses, especially at this stage of the game. Uh, even though you've refined it a few times, this is the moment where you get to say to yourself, hey, what can this table read on earth for me? So... <clears throat> Perhaps plot points are unclear. Like the readers might be like, I don't understand what's going on here. Character motivations are muddled or the scene lacks emotional impact, which again, it's like, I can't believe you're dying in my arms. Me either. Uh, I thought we'd all grow old together. This is terrible. I can't believe you were shot. And like no one in the, at the table like cares. Emotional impact is lacking. So by you, the writer, actively listening to your readers' reactions and taking notes you can pinpoint these weaknesses and address them. Another thing is like after the reading, like if your readers are still talking about the script or they're like, I really love this part or this character, I solely understand that character. You know, you're doing a good job. Um, so this comes down to number six, testing your audience engagement. So ultimately, like I'm saying, you know, are they drawn into it? Are they leaning in? Are they like really reading it? Are they gripped? You know, what is their emotional? Are they laughing? Are there tears? Is there suspense? Are they like, oh my God, are they rooting for characters? Are they upset when things happen to characters? Those are important things to know. All right. So let's really get into the next part, which is set, section two, setting up the table read. You want to do one. So how do we do it? Well. You want to ensure you have a comfortable space with enough seating for your readers. So invite invite individuals who can bring your script to life, whether they are actors or fellow writers. Don't forget to provide refreshments, a well-fed cast and crew make for a more engaging session. So with that said, here are nine things to keep in mind. Select the right participants. The first step in setting up a table read is choosing the right participants. Consider inviting actors or readers who can effectively bring your scripts uh, and your characters to life. Their ability to embody the roles will provide a more immersive experience, helping you assess the script's impact on an audience. More importantly, make sure they get the script in advance so they could kind of look over, read it a few times. Not that they're uh, going to be off book because that's not what you're there. They're there to read the script. So we know they're going to read it, but it'll allow them to understand the characters and maybe make choices that you, again, didn't think were going to be there. Number two, you want the setting to be comfortable. Ensure that the location for the table read is comfortable and conducive to the reading. A quiet, well-lit room with comfortable seating is ideal. And you also want to eliminate distractions like noisy surroundings or interruptions to create a focused environment. I'm sure there are studios you could go rent. I'm sure there are theaters with back rooms. I'm sure you can get together at somebody's house. The point is make sure that everyone is comfortable, that there are enough seats, uh, and that uh, <clears throat> you have the time. Um, I would say roughly uh, for every page you have of a script, it's going to be about a minute on screen, but with the table read, I would go three minutes per page, right? And then I'd add a half hour to that for all the getting together, sitting down, getting comfortable, getting adjusted. So if you have a hundred pages, I'd say that's 300 minutes. It's just 300 minutes. So uh, divided by 60, whoop, my bad. Divided by 60. And that might be actually a little long. That's that might be. 
how did I do it? I did three hours. I did about an hour, a 60 page script for an episode. Uh, and we were there for about two and a half hours. I guess, I guess it's, eh, give it take, give it take. Um, so there you go. And the reason is, is because you have to ask questions for, for you got to read it. You have to ask the questions and people have to show up. So you got to make sure everybody's comfortable uh, with the environment and the amount of time, et cetera, et cetera. And they're going to, they're going to be there for a bit, you know, make sure everybody has a script. All right. So that's uh, that's also number three. Uh, make sure that every participant has a script. Don't allow people to read off of each other's script. Another great way you could do this is uh, ultimately just send them the file and they could print it out or they could read the PDF on it on a device. That's also okay. Obviously, um, uh, you want a reader briefing number four <clears throat> before starting the table read brief your readers on the goals and expectations of this table read. Let them know what you're looking for and what kind of honest feedback and encouragement uh, uh, they can give you. Um, let them know that you don't want them to praise your script just because they might hurt your feelings if they tell you the truth. Let them be honest with how they feel about it, which is different than them going, this is terrible, or I don't like it. You want answers like, I don't understand what's happening. That's okay. That's a good answer. They're not there to have the answers for you on what to fix, but if they don't know what's going on, that's something to pay attention to. If they go, these characters feel very stagnant. Like I don't, it, I don't feel like they're growing. That's great. They don't have to tell you how to fix that. That's your job as a writer. But them seeing the characters being stagnant, that's good information. It's not saying the script is bad. It's just saying to them, they're not experiencing growth in the characters. Um, even them saying, you know, they seem like every scene takes place in a bar. Like there's just no variety to uh, the scene. And like, I, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not interested. Like I'm, I'm getting bored. Like that's okay too. Cause that makes you think, right? Five. Hi. Uh, moderate or direct. All right. Consider approaching a uh, moderator or director to oversee the table read. This person can help maintain the flow, guide readers when needed and ensure that the reading stays on track. So having a neutral facilitator can be particularly helpful in managing discussions and feedback. You can be there. Uh, you could be the person who is directing and, mo and moderating it. But uh, if you get one, if you get a director to kind of control the table read, you could kind of be in the room and relax off in the back and just listen and be a part of the experience. I recommend recording. Number six, recording. If possible, record the table read. Audio or video recordings are invaluable for later reference. They allow you to revisit specific moments, reactions, and discussions that occurred during the readings. This is especially helpful when you're in the revision phase. I always have something recorded. Refreshments. This is probably the most important thing. Give them some pizza and some drinks. You know what I'm saying? Make sure they're eat. A uh, well-fed and relaxed group tends to offer the most insightful feedback because they're not hungry. But you also want to make sure they have liquids, waters, anything, because they're going to be talking, right? They're going to be reading. Uh, additionally, number ocho, schedule appropriately. All right. Uh, be mindful of the time allotted for the table read. Like I said, an hour, you know, 60, 60 pages is going to be an hour read, plus questions, plus getting there, plus etc. All right. So avoid rushing through the reading as this can lead to missed nuances and re uh, feedback. So if you have a two hour script, like a 120 page script, you know, that's two hours plus a half hour to get there, right? Everyone to get settled. So that's two and a half hours plus questions, which could be anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. It's three hours. That's a, you know, I guess the three minutes per uh, per page makes sense. Um, <clears throat> you're really you're really you're really pushing it. I mean, it's almost five hours if it's three three minutes per page for a hundred pages. But you have to really think about that. You know, put 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 some time into it. You know, it is a minute per page minimum. Uh, so 120 pages is going to be two hours reading. Um, but more importantly, 
you got to discuss what, what what are you looking for? So you have the half hour beforehand. Everyone's sitting down. Maybe they're getting maybe they're eating first. Let them eat first. Maybe they get a drink first. Uh, and then the questions, you know, are you uh, I like to do questions every uh, act. So at the end of the first act, I'll ask some questions at the end of the second act or even even the uh, end of the mid second act, because I, I kind of look at stories as almost almost like four acts. I look at act two as two parts, the beginning of act two and the end of act two. Um, so, you know, questions, questions can add up time. So be conscious of that and allow them to know, listen, this might be a three hour or three and a half hour session, but you're going to be fed. We're going to have comfy chairs. I promise you, uh, you know, or, or break it up. Be like, let's do the first half of the script, uh, one day and do uh, the next day. It's your job to schedule appropriately and, uh, nine feedback. Uh, plan for a feedback session immediately, immediately after the table read, or as I suggested, uh, after every act. Okay. So enjoy, enjoy, uh, your, your, your job is to encourage them to participate and allow them to share their thoughts, impressions, and questions. You want them to really feel comfortable telling you how they feel. All right. So <clears throat> In conclusion, setting up a table read is a meticulous process uh, that involves selecting the right participants, creating a conductive um, environment, providing scripts, et cetera, et cetera. So you got to really put some time into it. Uh, but with that said, uh, if you're, by the way, if you're a beginner or an advanced writer and you haven't done so already and you like what you're hearing, please subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. We talk about lessons. Uh, we, we do lessons on craft. As such, uh, uh, we analyze and review storytelling and uh, we interview fellow writers. All right. Section three, the role, your role during the table read. Let's talk about this. <clears throat> As the writer, your role during the table read is crucial <laughs> and critical. While your script unfolds before you, focus on actively listening and observing pay attention to the delivery timing and nuances of dialogue take notes but resist the urge resist the urge to interrupt <clears throat> to interrupt interject or explain unless specifically asked by the readers this is a time to gather feedback and insight from your readers basically what resonates with them what feels awkward or unclear you want to be open to their constructive criticism and use it to refine your script. So with that said, the act of listening is, as a writer, your primary task during the table read. And this means fully engaging with the performance without interrupting or explaining your intentions, unless, of course, asked. <clears throat> Pay close attention to how the dialogue and the narrative unfold and be receptive to the reader's interpretations. Another thing is note taking, you know, note taking number two, you want to have a notebook or a digital device ready to take notes throughout the reading, jot down your observations, questions that you will have for the readers and moments that stand out both positive and negative. <clears throat> Three is character dynamics. You want to focus on the character dynamics and interactions of the readers. You want to notice how the actors bring the characters to life and whether their relationships feel authentic. Are there moments of chemistry or tension that work well? You might even say to yourself, I like the choices you're making. Can we do that read again? Can we do that scene again? But kind of dig into that. Or you might be like, hey, you're kind of playing that a little evil. <laughs> can, you, can we try it with a little more love? Um, I was doing a, uh, a casting project and uh, we had a reader and the reader uh read the character like like a real dark father you know like you know i work all the time and when i come home you know and we're like no no he's 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 being empathetic to her like there and he's like oh <laughs> like it changes it changes the feel and the mood but you know they're readers and they're making choices and sometimes you have to say let them go through it though don't interrupt while they're doing it but at the end of the scene oh hey uh that was a little aggressive could we maybe try to make it more empathetic just so I could hear it, right? Um, 
dialogue evaluation, of course, of course, you want to make sure the dialogue is making sense. You don't want the lines to feel uh, convenient or forced. Uh, you want to take note of any lines that feel completely unnatural or out of place. Um, also consider whether the pacing of the dialogue matches the emotional tone of the scene. You know, is there a lot of dialogue or a little dialogue? Is, the di is there too much uh, stage direction, etc.? Um, and again, you know, we talk about pacing and timing a lot, but it's your job to really pay attention to the pacing and timing at the table read. You know, are there moments where you feel like the scene is really dragging? Now, this could also become a part of performance. I had a table read for one of my uh, plays that turned into a short film that we were going to do before the pandemic. And uh, um, <clears throat> one of the readers was just kind of like they were reading the thing. They were doing, you know, you know, that's how they were reading and uh, but but most of it they were reading like very active and they were like and i was like hey does do, do we want to take a break you know what's the deal and they're like no i was like all right well this this moment has there's energy to this you're 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 working through a moment of enlightenment like you're realizing things and you're you're excited about that and you found you 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 still have hope in you and you still have that love in you and you you know it's coming out that this whole speech is it you're you're coming out of your shell finally it took took you the whole movie to get to this point but you're officially like this i get it i i've been the one destroying all the all the hope in me but it's there it's, i know it's there i feel it and there's so many opportunities and you know so it changes their energy so it could even be a short part, and they're just like, this is where I feel things have happened for us. And you're just like, whoa. <laughs> so that could also affect the way you uh, absorb the pacing and timing. So you do have to step in and be like, hey, just so you know, there needs to be a little bit of something, something here. You know, don't let the moments drag. The emotional impact is also important. You know, are the actors or the readers uh, performing with an emotional element to it? Or are they just sort of reading like this as I read the emotional impact of the zine? Right. Those might not be the readers you want to work with again because you want them to have something. You want them to bring something in it so you can sense if there is an emotional impact to the characters. And again, are there are the, are the table of readers interacting with that? So. And of course, uh, engagement with the story, you know, how are they get, are they getting excited? These are things you should be paying attention to as the writer, as you're witnessing it. Either you have a director handling the table or you're handling the table. You shouldn't be really looking at the script. You shouldn't be down there like, oh, I'm reading along with them. You should be looking at the table like what's going on here, right? Uh, <clears throat> I like to write with partners, too. So sometimes when I do movies and stuff like that, uh, scripts, I usually have somebody else there that I really believe in. And they'll be the one that's sort of like reading the script along with them. They'll just be looking at it, making sure everything's being said. And, the, and then I'll pay attention to what's going on. Right. Um, and then, uh, you know, again, you want to resist the urge to explain. It's natural to want to explain your intentions or clarify certain aspects of the script during the reading. But resist this urge. Allow the performance and the feedback session afterward to reveal any areas of confusion or misinterpretation this silence on your part encourages more honest and unfiltered reactions feedback session uh which is nine you know after the table read after you guys finish after the table's done after you read the script after you read your act whatever it is you want to do you got to initiate that feedback you need it right then and there they're they're primed for it they have their experience with it and you need to have your questions ready uh <clears throat> you could do a couple of things you could have a couple of questions written down on a sheet pass the sheet around to each of them and have them just write down what they felt you know write down their thoughts on those answers you could talk around the room hey here's my general question everybody what are your thoughts you can do that there's so many different ways you could do this uh, I like to kind of mix both of them up, you know, just so like no one kind of influences the other. I like to have them write it down. And then once I have everything, I'll go, oh, OK. And then we talk about it a little bit. And of course, number 10, you want to stay open minded. Keep an open mind during the feedback session. While your script is a creation of your vision, it can benefit immensely from the perspectives of others. So embrace create a constructive criticism and use it as a tool for improving your script. 
final thoughts. A table read is a transformative step in the screenwriting process. It allows you to step back, gain fresh perspectives, and refine your narrative. Remember that the goal is not just to hear your words, but to understand how they come to life in the minds of others. So set up your table read. Invite your cast and crew and embrace this opportunity to make the script even better. Okay. All right. I think that's really it. Oh, yeah. Now, a couple uh, side notes, uh, just real quick. Um, as you receive feedback, it's essential to, to really uh, differentiate between personal preferences and objective issues. Not every comment will align with your creative vision, and that's also okay. Focus on addressing objective problems that affect the screen's overall quality impact. I kind of went over that before. There's a difference between going, you know, I really wish that uh, this character had, you know, um, had a brother. <laughs> like, okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, or um, why are these two getting in a relationship? Like, I, I, I don't think they should end up in a relationship. I think I don't think there should be like a romantic element in the story. Okay, thank you. That's a personal preference. Thanks, I appreciate that. Always be nice. Objective issues are the I'm not understanding what's going on or. You know, uh, I'm, I'm bored. I feel bored. Like, I, I think it's going a little slow. Or I really love this moment. You know, I don't know why I love this moment, but I love this moment. Um, you know, uh, isn't this supposed to be a comedy? Because the jokes weren't hitting with me. Like, I'm not, I'm not understanding the humor. Like, it doesn't feel like there's any jokes. So, you know, there are objective issues. Like, if people are not laughing at a comedy, it needs work. If people are telling you they would prefer, <laughs> then it's a personal opinion. Um, obviously you want to revise. And another thing is maybe consider multiple table readings. You know, maybe you want to start off with three people reading multiple characters, right? <clears throat> Where it's like maybe your, uh, your most trusted friends who are writers and or actors, and then kind of expand to bigger and bigger groups. I would recommend not having a reader for every character, <laughs> meaning like we don't need someone to come in for the waiter. Uh, you want just the main characters to be handled. Sometimes not all the characters are in the same room. So you can be like, you know what? Here's a uh, tertiary character. Why don't you read the tertiary character every time they're in the scene? Uh, but you're also this main character when they're in the scene, you know, or whatever, <clears throat> you know. Uh, and also, mo most importantly, you want to trust your instincts. So while feedback is valuable, you, you can't lose sight of your creative instincts. You are the writer of the screenplay and you have a unique voice and a vision. The feedback is there to kind of allow yourself to think about the things that people are seeing. But just because someone says, I don't understand, doesn't mean other people don't understand. So the way you go about it is majority rules. If you have 10 people reading and seven of them understand what's going on and three of them don't, majority rules. Uh, if you want all 10 to understand what's going on, that's also fine. You just got to put in the work and make it a little clearer. And then uh, that's about it. Okay. Hey. Next video in this series will focus on step 11, a rewrite, fourth draft. What goes in a fourth draft? Why are we even doing a fourth draft? <laughs> We're going to learn. Question. Which screenplay were you surprised had more than 10 drafts? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you like what you've been watching or if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out. And, uh, hey, remember, you got to keep developing the right mindset. Hey, I'll see you next time. Bye.